Welcome to a new video about power electronics. In this example, we will discuss another power converter, DC-DC converter. There will be a chuck converter. We will see a design step-by-step -step to create these plots in MATLAB Simulink. For this circuit, we will also calculate the components for our chuck converter circuit. We will see that step-by-step -step in our calculations and also verify these in MATLAB Simulink simulations. Okay, this is the chuck converter. We see here in this case, two inductors and two capacitors still one diode and one switch we see also the load resistor here so in comparison with the other converters where we only had one inductor one capacitor and also one load we see here two capacitors two, in two inductors and the other parts are exact same a chuck converter has exactly the same action as the buck boost converter but the main difference between the buck boost converter and the chuck converter is that the energy storage is uh, done in the capacitors instead of the inductors. We see again our switch, which is in this case again an ideal switch. We will see shortly what we need to do for our design. So we would like to design this circuit such that this DC input is 18 volts. Output voltage will be the minus 30. So again in inversion, but this time it will be step up. And we need to have an output current of minus 3 amps. The maximum peak peak output ripple is allowed to be 1% of the uh, output itself, output voltage itself. And the maximum peak peak capacitor voltage ripple for the capacitor C1 is allowed to be 2%. Okay, let's see what we need to do in our calculations. First, we need to determine the duty cycle. That is our step one. Looking at the formulas for our chuck converter, we can use this formula, which is actually exact same as the buck boost converter formula we know that we have minus 30 so you take the absolute value divided by the source voltage plus the absolute value of the output voltage you get here 0 0.625 or 62.5 percent as the duty cycle next we again select our switching frequency for our switch here now in this case i again select the 100 kilohertz as my frequency for switching now the next step is the load resistor. Since we know that our output voltage is minus 30 volts and output current is minus 3 amps, we know from Ohm's law that we need a minimum resistor for our load of 10 ohms. So you just use Ohm's law here. So if you uh, place here a lower resistor, so you require more current, then the design will be not met. So we need to then stay above this value, so 10 or larger. Inductors, we need to now calculate the value of the inductor. How do we do that? First, look at the average inductor currents. That can be seen actually here from this circuit that the average inductor current of L2 is minus of the average load current. That means it must be then minus minus three, so it will be plus three amps. And the average inductor current for L1 will be also the source current average. But that is also related to the power of the source and that is then divided by the uh, source voltage itself. But in the ideal case, we can say the power balance in the ideal situation that the source power is equal to the load power. So we can write this. And since the load power or the output power is the output current times output voltage, so these two, we can say this is the minus 3 times minus 30 will be then 90 watts. So that means the source will be also producing 90 watts if we consider everything as ideal. Now we can then substitute here the 90 over 18 for our input DC voltage will give us 5 amps. So this is now the average DC or average or DC current for our inductor L1. Okay, the peak peak inductor current that is in this case selected as some percentage of the average inductor currents. So in this case we say for the inductor L1 we say 15% of the average value of its uh, 5 amps. So we take 15% of the 5 will be then 0.75 amps. In a similar case we select for the L2 as 15% again of the average value of L2 which is then 15% of 3 amps which will then 0.45 amps. Okay. Now using the selections here and also the duty cycle and the source voltage and also the switching frequency, you can calculate now what the value of L1 is using this formula, which in this case 150 microhenries. In a similar case, we can use that for 
I use the formula for L2 using the delta IL2 for this case and you get now 250 micro Henry's. So we have now our L1 and L2 for the circuit here. Now the capacitors C1 and C2 we start first with the average capacitor voltage of C1 that's this. Now how do we calculate that? What is the average capacitor uh, voltage of C1? Now we know with VC1 here VC1 is equal to the source voltage minus the load voltage. Why? Because average voltage across inductors will be zero. So this is zero. Ideally, this is zero. So you only have only the Vs is equal to average of the capacitor C1 plus the load voltage. And then if you write it down for the capacitor C1 only, you get this one. This is just using Kirchhoff's voltage law for average situation. So you get 18 minus minus 30, you get now 48 volts. Now we know this and we know also from the specification that we need maximum 2% of this average value. So we can calculate then what the peak peak capacitor voltage should be. That means it must be then 0 0.02 times this 48 will be then 0 0.96 volts or 960 millivolts. Okay, now we can calculate C1 using the average uh, or the peak peak capacitor voltage we just determined. We know the resistor, we know the, the switching frequency, the duty cycle and also the absolute value of our output voltage. So we get here 90.5 microfarads. Okay, and C2 can be calculated using the condition for a peak peak output ripple and also the duty cycle and also what we need for our inductor L2. And again, the switching frequency this time squared. So we use this formula. You substitute the values, you get here 1.875 microfarads. Okay, now let's also check the conduction modes because it can be that this system is or circuit is uh, operating in the continuous current mode or discontinuous current mode. So for L1, we need to have a minimum value, which is then given by this formula. When you substitute here the duty cycle, resistor, the and the uh, switching frequency, we get here 11.25 microhenries. Now we have that our L1 is 150 microhenries, so this is definitely larger than that one. So this is fulfilled in order to stay in the continuous current mode. And the L2 minimum is given by this expression for the condition. That will give us, if you substitute the values, 18.75 microhenries. We have L2 as 250 microhenry, so definitely larger than the L2 minimum. So again, looking at these two conditions and also values, we say that this is in the continuous current mode. Okay, now let's select the uh, collect the values here. We just determined for our components and let's look at the sampling circuit. You see here the DC input voltage, the L1, the uh, switch here, which is ideal, which is uh, actually uh, operated from this pulse generator having a duty cycle of 62.5 percent we have the capacitor here the l c1 l2 c2 and the resistor of 10 ohms we also have some measurements we also see here the scope where we have six measurements we'll see that shortly in the next slide what we also see here is the average we calculate or measure here the average vo uh, voltage of the uh, capacitor C1. That is here measured as 48.5 volts. We actually have calculated 48 volts. So there's a small error. Could be that I have maybe rounded off these capacitors uh, not accurately. So that is the small error here. So that is in this case perfectly fine. Now looking at the steady state values for the output voltage and the output current in this plot, you see here in pink the output current or load current. And here in light orange or some uh, light brown color, the output or the load voltage. Now looking here, it is then minus 3.07 amps. So we should have minus 3 amps, so close. And in this case, for the output voltage, we have minus 30.7 volts. So again, a little bit larger, I mean, a little bit smaller than actually what we need. So small error, but still good enough for most practical purposes. Okay, let's zoom in and look at the detailed waveforms. We see here the inductor uh, current, I mean inductor voltage L for L1. You see it's going up to 18 volts, which is then the max of the in input voltage, and then reaches the minimum for the output voltage when it is 
the switch is closed, which is at approximately minus 30 volts. So you see actually here the labels for the inductor voltage L1. For the inductor current L1, we see here the labels of maximum and the minimum. And looking at the peak peak here, it is then 755 milliamps. We had required or we have selected that it was actually 750 milliamps. So a small error, but still good enough. For the capacitor voltage, we see here the maximum and the minimum. And when you look at the peak peak value, it will give you 979 millivolts. We know it should be 960 millivolts because of this 2% of the 48 volts. But there was also an error in the 48 volts. It was actually 48.5 volts according to Symbolink. So that error also translates in this error here. So this is still good enough, very close to each other. Now looking at the inductor current L2, again, the maximum and the minimum. Looking at the peak peak will be then 455 milliamps. Looking at these two values here. And we had required of 450 milliamps. So again, you see that it's very close to each other. This is the load current, but the most important part is actually the load voltage peak peak. So this is the maximum and it is the minimum. We're looking at the peak peak, which is now 303 millivolts. We should have 1% of the 30 volts, which is then 300 millivolts. So again, close to what we wanted. All right, there was a design problem or design example concerning this chalk converter where we have calculated our component values given the specifications here. And we also verified our calculations using the MATLAB Simulink simulations. If you have any questions, comments, please and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video.